In today's episode of Roadmap to Success, we have with us Mr. Rakesh Sharma, the Executive Director on the Board of Bajaj Auto. We are going to be discussing about the emerging trends in the auto industry and what are the opportunities that are opening up for young graduates across the country. To give you a bit of introduction about Mr. Sharma, he has led the international business for Bajaj Auto for more than 10 years and created a significant global presence for the company. In his current role, he is responsible as the executive director for not only the international business, but also for the domestic motorcycles, the intercity commercial vehicles, and also auto finance. The auto industry is one of the key engines for the growth of the country, which means more employment opportunities. And as we move towards creating, uh, you know, possibly a, a turnover of uh, close to uh, 18 trillion rupees uh, in the next six, seven years, there are going to be humongous opportunities. So please let us know what do you see as the growth trend, the key levers for the growth for the industry. And in that context, how do you think the young graduates coming out of academic institutions would have the opportunity to build their careers? Thanks, Uma. Uh, for a young graduate, actually, the automobile industry is a fantastic industry to join. Uh, not only as large as you said, uh, it's a very significant player, not just in India, but in any country, the automobile industry is regarded as a bellwether of the economy. So it's a very large industry. It's a significant industry. Second is, the industry is global. What it means is that in any country, and of course in India, there are domestic as well as international players, which means that a person can have a career, not just in India, can join a company, global company in India, and can work with them in any parts of the world. A lot of the industry, uh, the products are universal, the practices are universal. So uh, the, uh, those things make it very, very international. The third thing which I really like about this industry is that it's in the throes of change. There is a lot of cutting edge stuff happening in this industry. There is a fantastic amalgamation of uh, technology, uh, different types of technology, computer science, um, and of course, business practices. It's a uh, lot of new uh, developments are taking place, electrification of it, connectedness, shared mobility. So if one joins this industry, one is pitchforked into the cutting edge area of development, which is a very good thing for a young person because then the people stay relevant, people are uh, pushed uh, to uh, develop their uh, capabilities, etc. So all the, the three things put together make it a very, very interesting industry uh, to be uh, becoming a part of. Uh, so Mr. Sharma, you spoke about uh, several new uh, developments taking place in the industry particularly uh, you highlighted about uh, electric vehicles. If uh, this is really going to be one of the key drivers of change in the way transportation industry is going to be emerging in the coming days, uh, would you uh, please um, let our young graduates know what are the new skills that they need to acquire and how should they be orienting themselves for this opportunity of the industry? Yeah, so uh, electric uh, is one of the forces. The other forces which are shaping the industry are uh, things like um, um, regulatory uh, um, uh, compliances. As we all know that uh, environmental concerns are, uh, you know, become very, very important given the context of all that is happening around us in terms of climate change, etc. And the automobile industry has been working very hard to respond in a very responsible way. And this is putting a huge uh, sort of a challenge on the R&Ds and the manufacturing uh, of, in the industry. The other thing are things like, you know, uh, shared mobility, which is things like Uber Auto and all. They're redefining how people are 
uh, moving around. You have the things like IoT, the connectedness, you know, the handphone and the motorcycle or the car and the computer are all getting very seamlessly connected and that's another very, very powerful force. The most important thing according to me uh, is uh, to have functional depth and be very, very open to learning. The changes are coming so fast that I don't think any academic institution is ready to be teaching these things. But what the academic institutions can teach and what the students must learn is how to read the changes and the implication and be prepared to set up, step out of the zone of comfort and say that this is what I know, but going forward, all what I know is not going to be of much use. I'll have to learn something new. Can you just paint the picture for the future of work and how should academic institutions and students prepare for the future of work? So, uh, the, as we understand it today, uh, certainly the uh, workplace will not be the same. Yeah, there will be robots which will come in. Robots have come in uh, even in the call centers, you know, that the chatbots, even in the interview process, people are using robots. It's just that the humans get deployed elsewhere. The humans make the robots or humans design the software and the algorithm on the basis of which robots work. So, I will, the robots replace the humans, but then the human workforce deploys itself uh, in a very different way. So, I don't think that the human workforce gets eliminated. And that is the point I was making, that it is very important if we have to stay relevant and if you have to stay successful, then this whole attitude of being open to change. So I would say, I would single out actually two, three things which both the academia and the students have to demonstrate. I would say that uh, uh, people should uh, uh, be very, very uh, keen to step out of their zone of comfort. I think those days are gone. Uh, I have been in the practice of management for 35 years, but a lot of times I find that the experience which I've had in my 35 years is now rendered useless and I have to learn something new. So it is very important to step out into your zone of discomfort and be ready because there are new things emerging. Second is, I think curiosity is very important how things work, what is the latest stuff which is going on. Be ready to expose yourselves to many, many different facets. And the third thing is perspective. There is no one right way now. You know, so find it, find, uh, following a very linear or a unilateral path to something uh, is exactly the kind of thing which we should not be doing. So I would say that uh, staying current, I find that today I don't think that the universities or the academia can teach the exactly latest stuff. I know there are limitations on that. But there can be a heavy dose of saying current through inviting the industry and through active internship programs so that the industry is inside the academia and people are discussing problems which are happening right now, not which happened five years back because that is become irrelevant. So I would just say that staying relevant to, you know, a very broad interaction with the industry and bringing them in and the internship programs serve a very, very useful purpose in shaping those three things which I said. Can you share your perspective on how do you think the academic institutions should reorient the learning methodology or the training methodology, the education methodology, the pedagogies that they could be adopting in order to inculcate this learning to learn capability in the students? I think there should be a far, far higher level of um, uh, participation by the industry. In, in the sense that there should be a program, I think, where um, visiting faculty from the industry is interwoven into the program. Because the visiting faculty will be able to uh, bring the current issues on the table. The change is happening so fast that it is impossible to document the change and then uh, make an academic paper out of it and then 
teach it by the time you come to that uh you know that uh, things have moved on to another level now i'm not saying that uh, we don't do the fundamentals of course we do the fundamentals but i think it's about balance we need to have a balance where there is a very forceful induction of the industry into the teaching program but that is a point which i made about uh, internships are always a very very good way of uh, understanding the thing but then the internship what happens is that they end at the industry when students come back they need to then interact with their academia about the internship which has uh, happened and then uh, you know if the academia can play a role in shaping the internship a more sort of an active collaboration it's not it should not sometimes i find internships become very transactional that is just about placing a few students in whatever job it is no it should follow a, a, the curriculum a bit and should be shaped between the academy and the industry and should not just be about those 6 to 8 weeks it should be a little bit before and a little bit after in the university thank you very much mr sharma the key takeaway from this episode is we need to inculcate the spirit of learning to learn on a continual basis and taking the real problems of the industry into the academia and for the industry and the academic institutions to forge a much stronger ongoing partnership so on that note i would like to thank you for making your time available for uh, this interaction um i really enjoyed this conversation with you and i hope all of you out there also enjoyed this interaction interactive session with mr sharma thank you very much thank you